Welcome back. This is the second week for game theory and strategy. We are now going to start talking about solving games or our notion of equilibrium in game theory. We should also revise what we did last week. Last week we learned what do we mean by a game. We learned that a game is nothing but a strategic interaction and naturally we are interested in knowing what happens in those strategic interaction and we said that as humans and decision makers and companies and countries are participating in these strategic interaction it's not easy to figure out what they are going to do one thing one could say that they can behave randomly they can randomly pick one of the action to do but those outcome would be meaningless because whole idea here is that people try to maximize their benefit or they would like to minimize their cost or they would like to maximize their satisfaction. So they have certain goal that they try to achieve and to incorporate then this in solving the game we made certain assumptions and two main assumptions were rationality and common knowledge. Rationality said that players are able to make decision, they are consistent in making decision, they are able to calculate things perfectly, they have infinite memory, they remember what happened in the past and most important of all they are interested in maximizing their benefit. And common knowledge said that each one has knowledge about the game that they are playing, each one knows that others have knowledge about the game they are playing and each one knows that each one knows that each one has knowledge about game and so on and we gave you certain example. Now our turn to talk about solution concepts. So some we will start with some easy to digest solution concept as we progress further we would see that some solution concept would be slightly more difficult to accept. But before uh, we do that we also need to revise the notion of dominance that we did last week. We said that an action A for player I strictly dominates action B if A always gives better outcome than B for player I no matter what other players are doing. So let us say you have A player I who has three action A, B and C and player J who has X, Y and Z and K who has P, Q and R. So of course player I is deciding to whether to play A or to play B or to play C but J would be deciding between X, Y, Z, P, Q, R. So if we just write for the combination that may be coming from J, K, it could be X, comma P, it could be X, comma Q, it could be X, comma R, Y, comma P, Y, comma Q, Y, comma R, Z, comma P, Z, comma Q, Z, comma R. So from these two player there are nine combination possible. So what I, we are saying here that A strictly dominates B if for player I A gives better outcome than out, the outcome that he gets because of B no matter what others are doing whether others are playing XP, XQ, XR, YP, YQ, YR, ZP, ZQ, ZR it does not matter. A always gives more to player I then we say that A dominates B and if A also strictly dominates C no matter what one of these combination other players are doing then we say that A is the dominant strategy for player I. And similarly we had defined the weak dominance also. So I urge you to go back and revise. It is a very similar concept. Before we proceed further, I want to differentiate between action and strategy. See what happens, let us say that in a normal form game, 
players decide and once and for all so right at the beginning of the game they are deciding let us say go for up or down or left or right but when you have an extensive form game it's very much possible that player one decides between up and down then player two decides left or right and then again player one may have to decide here we cannot have such a situation because everything is decided right at the beginning so when we talk about action we are talking about let us say here one can do p or q here we are talking about player one can take either action u or action d and here player one can take action p or q but when we are talking about a strategy of player one that strategy has to describe what player one is going to do here and what player one is going to do here that's how action and strategies are different again we are going to revisit this this is very very important concept so we will talk about it in much more detail later on but if we have just this simple setting then strategies and actions are going to be the same okay but in extensive form game we have to be bit more careful so that's why when we are talking about normal form game we will use action or strategy interchangeably don't get confused about it for normal form game they are the same now we have already learned about the assumption of rationality and in rationality we figured out that players would like to maximize their benefit and now if each player has a dominant strategy what does dominant strategy says that it is best to play that particular strategy for player that particular player so we are talking about a situation in which each player has a dominant strategy what should they do they should obviously they should blindly play that dominant strategy and when they play dominant strategy the outcome or the equilibrium that would come would be called dominant strategy equilibrium and of course it would be of two type if each player has a strictly dominant strategy then we will lead to it will lead to having a strictly dominant strategy equilibrium if each player has weakly dominant strategy then it will lead to weakly dominant strategy equilibrium so just for a definition we can say a strictly dominant strategy equilibrium is an action profile where each player action is strictly dominant good we have seen this particular game and we can say that here is ranga and here is villa confess is the dominant strategy for ranga and confess is dominant strategy for billa so obviously billa is going to play confess ranga is going to play confess and outcome is going to be confess confess and clearly they would be maximizing their payoff because ranga will take but billa is doing as given ranga cannot do better by deviating because confess is a dominant strategy for ranga so if he changes and if confess here is the strict dominant strategy if he changes his behavior his payoff will definitely decrease therefore no one has any incentive to change their behavior and this is going to be an equilibrium what is the good news here of course ranga needs to figure out that which strategy is the dominant strategy but once he has figured it out he doesn't need to worry about what billa is doing and so the same thing is true for billa billa needs to figure out if he has a dominant strategy then once he figures out he has a dominant strategy he should not worry about what ranga is doing billa should play his dominant strategy and therefore it's very very easy equilibrium to accept the problem is most of the time we decision makers may not have a dominant strategy so we will proceed further to understand how to obtain outcome in such a setting here i have given you know i will leave it in the notes here i have given the formal definition but i am not going to spend time on the formal definition as we have obtained strict dominant strategy equilibrium can we also talk about weakly dominant strategy equilibrium let us look at the game 
player 1 can decide up or down, player 2 can decide left or right. The payoff, let us say, uh, payoff is. One comma one zero comma zero zero comma zero zero comma zero. Now let us say that none of the players have strict dominant strategy. Player one has weak dominant strategy. This one is greater than zero, and this zero is equal to zero. So U is clearly a weakly dominant strat strategy or weakly dominant action. U weakly dominates D because U does better then D when player 2 is playing L, but U does as good as D when player 2 is playing R. So, U is the weakly dominant action for 1 and so is L. L is the weakly dominant action for 2. So, of course, the outcome is going to be u comma l in which both the players are playing their weekly dominant strategy. Player 1 plays u because you know by playing something else he would never do better than uh, the payoff that u would get him. So, therefore, this is a weekly dominant strategy equilibrium. Before we proceed further, we should note the what kind of assumptions we have used to obtain these two equilibrium notion. One, that players are rational and we have not used common knowledge. We have used that each player knows the structure of the game, who are the players, what are the strategies or actions they have and what are the payoffs. So, each player, you know, player one knows the game and he figures out that U is the weekly dominant strategy. Player two knows the game and figures out L is the weekly dominant strategy for player two and therefore, player one plays U, player two plays L and the outcome is U comma L. It's as clear as that. We have not used the further requirement for uh, common knowledge so far. Another thing I want to emphasize that when a player has a dominant strategy, it's going to be a unique dominant strategy. I want you to think about it and get back to me if your notion, if you think that my statement is not true. 